Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Columbus Marketing Show, episode number two. As always, I am still your host, Nate Riggs. They haven't fired me yet. We are very excited for this week's episode, and if you did not catch our last episode, the very first episode, go back and check that out on YouTube. The guest was Stephanie Renee Harper from the City of Columbus. Really interesting discussion on marketing in municipalities and government. This week's show, we are focusing on the role of market research and some of today's most innovative techniques and how these are being used to improve businesses and business effectiveness all across the world. We're gonna talk a little bit about various different methods of market research as well as the effects that it can have on how you develop your corporate strategies. Our guest today is Brett Scotto, president and CEO of Aimpoint Research. Aimpoint is based in Columbus, but a global market research, commercialization, and business development firm. They have offices here as well as in Cincinnati and more recently in Rome, Italy. Brett graduated from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point and was an Army captain. He uh, learned a lot about leadership skills and gained experience as an Army intelligence officer. He has over two decades of research experience conducting market research projects for corporations, governments, various different organizations and leaders all across the country. Welcome to the studio, Brad. Well, thank you, Nate. Great to be with you. It is a, a pleasure to have you here, and we are going to dig into all kinds of different questions. But first, we're going to take a real quick break and come back with the news. This week's Marketing Insights is focused on the market research industry, industry obviously. Uh, according to IBIS World, market research in the U.S. represents a $20 billion industry. According to salary.com, 11 of the fastest growing jobs in America are centered in the market research firm. So, Brett, I want to ask you, why is this? Why is suddenly market research such a big opportunity, especially for people that are looking to get into marketing? Well, Nate, I really believe that pre-recession, market research was one of those things done by innovative companies as a nice to have, as a competitive advantage. Today, post-recession, companies can't afford to make mistakes. They can't afford to throw money at advertising campaigns or products or research and development that they don't think there's a market for. And so there's this significant resurgence in market research where companies of all sizes, from the largest to the startup, are really investing in market research first because they can make better, more informed strategic decisions about how to approach a marketplace. I mean, it's interesting because even 10 to 12 years ago, when I was in the very beginning of my career, uh, the word data-driven marketing was the new word of the day, and everybody was really focused on data-driven marketing. Today, there is no marketing without data. What has caused that? Is it, is it just the availability of information on the web? Is it the fact that we now have technologies and broadcasts that are different? What, what really is the cause of all this data and marketing? You know, I think a lot of it is that the attention of the average consumer is so fractured now. There are so many places that they can get information, so many ways that they can seek out information about products or a market and the competition to capture that consumer's attention and to get them to make a purchasing decision is more intense than ever. And so, uh, you know, investing in data, not only the data you may be collecting in the course of running your business, but also those strategic insights where you can get deep inside of consumer's decision-making process and figure out what will compel them to look my way, to look at my product or my service. Uh, that's an essential investment now in order to be competitive. So as a professional that is maybe a marketing professional that's maybe thinking about changing into a market research uh, company or a career or even a graduating student from college, what's your advice in terms of how they prepare? How do you prepare to get into the market research industry? Well, the first thing is you have to be curious. You have to be inquisitive and you have to like people. You know, if you are a person that goes around trying to figure out why things are the way they are, then you have at least the fundamentals. So then there's a lot of skill sets that have to be learned. There's a lot of different nuances to research, qualitative and quantitative. And so there are a lot of things you, you must learn. However, the first step is really just being curious about the world and trying to find good explanations for why things are the way they are. Ultimately, it's our job is to provide leaders with actionable insight where they can gain a strategic advantage or uh, achieve their goals. In order to do that, you need to ask the right questions and you need to make the right observations. And uh, if you have somebody that just goes through the steps, that won't do it. You have to have somebody that's truly curious about the world around them. We're going to be back with more from our guest, Brett Scotto, in just a moment. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. 
We change the way businesses understand and use digital media to connect with customers, earn their trust, and win their business for life. Learn more at nrmedia.biz. And we are back. I'm here with my guest, Brett Scotto from Aimpoint Research, a market research firm in Columbus. Brett, we appreciate you joining the show. You have a very interesting background that led you to the market research industry. Talk to me a little bit about your military experience. After graduating from West Point, I went off to serve as a, an Army intelligence officer, and my first assignment was with the 101st Airborne Division. And in that environment, you learn very quickly the powerful advantage that information can give you in planning uh, an operation or a, a battle or otherwise. And information really can be the discerning difference between success and failure. It can give you a, a true competitive edge or it could have catastrophic uh, impact if, if you don't have the correct information or make a wrong conclusion. And so as an intelligence officer, you have a number of roles, a number of different jobs that and uh, uh, different jobs that you can be in and serve in, different capacities in which you're looked to for information. And uh, there are a couple different roles that, that really had an impact on me. And the first was I, I served as a fusion chief at the division level towards the end of my career. And also every intelligence officer really is looked to, to play the red hat commander. And the red hat commander is really where you're putting yourself into the enemy commander's mindset in order to tell your, your folks, your staff, how they will act or react to things that we are doing. And so that becomes a critical part of planning uh, a military operation. So when I got out of the military, uh, those two specific rules stuck with me, and I was thinking about the logical application of that to the civilian world. And one of the things that I observed is that oftentimes leaders make uninformed decisions or they lack the true information that they need to be decisive, to act confidently, or to be successful. And those lessons learned from the military when applied and woven into the proven methodologies of the market research world at the civilian, uh, it could have a powerful combination and allow you to get more actionable, deeper insight information. So this idea of the Red Hat Commander is very interesting because I would assume then that allows you, based on that training, to think like a consumer. And, you know, this is something that I've personally done when in various different roles where, you know, I always say my secret, my secret weapon is my wife because she's that 24 to 36 female demographic that just about everybody targets. How is that different when you have to put yourself in the mind of people who are not your demographic, psychographic uh, way? Well, of what, it, what it does, Nate, is it requires you to gather an incredible amount of insight from a lot of different vantage points. Because in order to be the Red Hat commander or a good market research expert, is you almost have to become predictive. Because it's not enough to just observe how people act when you introduce X. You have to determine how they'll act when circumstances maybe outside of your control impact their behavior. And so being a Red Hat commander in the military was to almost to be predictive, to think about how that uh, particular enemy commander views the world and how when they're stimulated by various moves on the battlefield, they will uh, react to it or not. And the same applies to any consumer research or any project that you're in. You're, you're looking for information about how someone will act. And one of the traditional limitations, I think, of, of market research is it's easy for firms to go out and collect information and say, here it is, it's X, this is how they will act. What's difficult for them is to truly contextualize that information, and that's the missing piece that I think traditional market research fails to do a good job of, and that is putting the observation, the prediction within the proper context so that you can plan effectively for the future. And this is really what you're talking about right now, this idea of building in context to the research is what I would believe is the basis of this idea of fusion. Yeah. So what is fusion? How do you define fusion? Research? Fusion is actually a term that we use in the military. As I said before, I was a fusion chief and my job was, was to use a lot of different systems to gain different vantage points on a circumstance, on a location of an enemy force, on the actions of a particular country or the movements of an army, uh, to use a lot of different technology to look at things from various vantage points so that you can conclude decisively how, uh, what ground truth is. And so fusion mixes qualitative and quantitative and a lot of different techniques that we use to collect information puts it all together and, and creates a more comprehensive view of a circumstance. And that is what I think really empowers you to be more predictive 
and to have better accuracy and better contextualized information, which ultimately translates to better actions. So how do you break this down from a tactical level? You have you know, very traditional uh, methods of market research, sure. things like focus groups, surveys, various different studies. Now you have big data entering the marketplace and all the companies out there right now are infatuated, I think, with big data. Uh, how do you bring these two worlds together in, in terms of future? Well, the first thing you have to recognize if you're a good researcher is that all of them have advantages and disadvantages. All these different tactics work in certain ways and fail in other ways. And so the first thing you need to do is do as much secondary research as you can to truly understand the marketplace and your your client and their competitors to so get as much information as you can gather to get awareness of the market. And then you go out and develop your theories with qualitative research techniques, and there are a lot of ways, focus groups are one of them, uh, interviews, you know, observations, there's a lot of things you can do to develop theories about uh, the circumstance or to answer the question that your client may have, the strategic question. But those observations are not enough, and I think this is where uh, a lot of firms make bad decisions is they, they rest on that qualitative. What you do then is take those qualitative observations or those theories and, and test them in a quantitative environment. And there's a lot of different techniques to quantitative. Polling is one of them that you mentioned, surveys. Uh, there's a lot of advancements now in mobile technology and tapping into uh, folks through cell phones and then through interactive uh, applications. And there's also web-based. There's a lot of ways to get information on people. What matters is to not use any one of those techniques, but to use multiple techniques and then fuse it all together to gain a more comprehensive view. So this is what your firm, Aimpoint Research, does. You, you provide these services to, to a variety of different companies across the globe. Talk a little bit about kind of the background story of, of Aimpoint. How did it come about? Well, Aimpoint really is the evolution of, of two other companies that I started uh, almost 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. And the first was American Strategies, which was really a public affairs firm uh, based on market research, based on superior intelligence. And we helped candidates and causes who wanted to succeed at an election or succeed in advancing some issue. Uh, we helped them by providing superior intelligence so that they could navigate and, and galvanize and bring together folks to rally behind their efforts. But, you know, the political industry really is, uh, is a difficult one. We were quite successful in it, but it, it certainly can wear you down. And so uh, in 2008, I launched a spinoff firm called Governing Dynamic, which was aimed at providing that same intelligence to existing government leaders, not just helping them through elections or, or uh, ballot initiatives, but also uh, once they're in office. More and more through the transition between those two companies, we, we got asked to provide our unique model to corporations and to uh, nonprofits and other organizations. And uh, quite frankly, we just outgrew our branding. And Aimpoint was uh, really the evolution of, of our method and uh, our history kind of rolled in and, uh, and made available to a lot of different industries. And today, we serve four distinct functions. We still have a little bit of the public affairs. We do a, a reasonable amount of government work. Uh, most of our growth and expansions in the corporate front, and then we just still help some advocacy organizations from time to time. But what we found is the principles of the fusion model and the our unique approach to market research uh, is, is somewhat industry nonspecific. It, it can be applied to any industry. And today we have a diverse clientele. It's all over the world. Uh, multi-billion dollar companies to the to the startup that just wants to figure out how to uh, make their product successful in, in the marketplace and so uh, it's it's intriguing because we get to operate on so many different fronts on so many different products and services and organizations and meet a tremendous people and entrepreneurs aimpoint was really designed to empower leaders to be successful and leaders uh, are in all facets of life and certainly entrepreneurs uh, are, are a category of leadership and Aimpoint is really uniquely designed to give you the answers to your most pressing questions so you can be successful. It's a really interesting dynamic between you guys and the Nielsen AIGs of the world or even the EPSOS, these hugely you know, well-known large firms that also come with very, very high costs, which makes their research inaccessible to a lot of smaller companies. Right. You guys are kind of the blue ocean approach of that, where small, agile, but still a global presence. Right. Talk to me a little bit about your business model. 
Yeah, we kind of see ourselves more as the special operators of intelligence, almost a private intelligence firm for corporate leaders and, and folks that want uh, to approach a marketplace more strategically. I, I think, you know, a lot of firms have grown up on the backs of a singular client. Some of the ones you named really got their start uh, in a single industry or with a single company and then they grew up. Uh, and to a certain degree, we've enjoyed not doing that, that we've had diversity in our background from day one. We've helped uh, countless clients in different industries. And I think that has done a couple of things. One, our methodology is unique, but two, I think our perspective is unique. We're not just ingrained in one field. We really can observe the consumer in a lot of different fields, and that gives us better context and, and better understanding. Brett, you guys have a very interesting approach to market research, uh, and, and I applaud you for making it accessible to everybody. If I am a, a small firm uh, or even a mid-sized firm who's never worked with a market research firm before, how do I know when I have a project that I could use the services of a market research firm, and then how do I work with them? Well, that's one of the great things about market research is it really is applicable to everyone. And I, you know, I would start by asking the audience a question, and that is what keeps you up at night? What do you think about in terms of planning your company's next year or next product? And those strategic questions, those insights that you require to make better decisions, uh, it, it can be answered. And it just starts with reaching out to a firm like ours and beginning that conversation and say, you know, I have these questions. And if I knew the answer, I could act more strategically and be more successful. Is there a way to get the answers? And let us just have a conversation. The one thing about market research, especially at the beginning of a relationship, is it's highly collaborative. It's a conversation. We don't just go off into the back room and come back with an answer. Whoever we're working with, they are the experts on their product. Uh, it's just a matter of figuring out how to access the intelligence they need and look for the indicators uh, that we need in order to, to give them the answer. So, I don't know of a single business owner out there that doesn't have questions. We just help them answer some of them. A lot of uh, business leaders out there and marketers in particular are very focused around the idea of customer profiles or, or personification of the customer. And if you look online or in other sources, it's really kind of a debate whether that's valid or invalid and have we outgrown that. What's your take on personas? Oh, I, you know, I think it's a helpful for an indication of direction sometimes. but. The consumer is complicated. All of us are consumers, and the, the way in which we go about making decisions could be different uh, and and certainly impacted by various things within our lives. And so I, I think profiling people and kind of lumping them into categories is a way to get uh, the start of a framework, but it certainly needs to be a little more sophisticated than that in terms of figuring out how your specific demographic uh, reacts. And I, you know, a lot of times you'd be surprised how many companies don't really even know who their target customer is. They maybe have been successful. And a lot of companies measure success against last year. We did X last year, now we're doing Y, we must have done, we were doing better. But you don't know what the potential is. And one of the things that market research can help you do is not only figure out who it is that is your customer or who it should be, uh, but it can also tell you what the potential is and whether you're performing at that potential level or not. Not just measuring against yourself, but measuring against the possibility. I want to switch gears for one second to you're a Columbus resident or Columbus, Ohio area resident. You've, you've now built three companies uh, in this area. What is it about Columbus that has provided an environment to allow you to be so successful? I'll tell you that I have moved and lived all around uh, the country. I moved uh, a lot as a child and certainly as an adult, I moved around a lot. And the one place that we lived, even as a young child, that was the most memorable to me was Columbus, Ohio. And although we moved away, it never left that this was the place that felt like home. And there are a lot of tremendous places to, to visit and to go see, but when I come back to Columbus, I know that it, it is home. And it's the perfect balance of things. Uh, it's Midwest values, it's a city full of entrepreneurs and full of potential and all the big city amenities, yet still a small town feel and the opportunity to really know people and to connect with people. And uh, I can't imagine starting a business really anywhere else. Although we have offices in other countries, uh, when we work around the world, there's nothing better than coming home to Columbus. Again, my guest today is Brett Scotto, CEO and founder of Aimpoint Research. Aimpoint.com uh, is the website, correct? Aimpoint Research. Aimpointresearch.com is yeah. the website. Uh, when we visit there, what can we find? What can we learn about you guys? 
Well, we're getting excited because we're about to launch our new site and that will be coming online here just in a couple of weeks. And what you'll learn about us is kind of some of the personalities, some of the belief systems of the firm, how we approach market research. Uh, but really what we want to do is just get you familiar enough that you'll reach out to us. Nothing's better than just giving us a call or an email and then starting to connect with one of our team members and talking about, like I said, what keeps you up at night, what questions do you have and beginning that dialogue. But the, the, the website will help you gain some information about our firm and our background and where, uh, where we operate and how we approach it. And we'll make sure to include some links in the show notes uh, for this post. Brett, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I want to you know, thank you very much for your time and, and best of luck in 2015 growing, growing Aimpoint Research. Well, thank you for the invitation, Nate. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> Cisco estimates that by 2018, video will represent 79% of all internet traffic. Take your marketing program to the next level by engineering video content libraries that are strategically designed to drive traffic, convert customers, and build lasting brand loyalty. Get a sneak peek of the Video Engineering Playbook, a new book by Nate Riggs. Download your free sample chapters by clicking this link. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for episode number two of the Columbus Marketing Show. My special thanks to Brett Scotto, CEO and founder of Aimpoint Research. We are filming this live in NR Media Group Studios down on East Main Street in downtown Columbus. You can watch the studio live recording on YouTube of the Columbus Marketing Show. That is on the NR Media Group YouTube channel. You can also get this in audio files as well as the show notes and copy on nrmedia.biz. Look for those posts. Special thanks to the the NR Media Group production crew, Nate Marshall, Chris Summers, and Alex Foley behind the cameras making this show possible. As always, I am your host, Nate Riggs. Come back next week for another Columbus marketing show, and we will see you back here then.